Hello, watchers and listeners, and welcome to another episode of the Author Interview Plunge. Today's author, Jennifer Irwin, wrote A Dress the Color of the Sky. Jennifer is a native New Yorker who currently resides in Los Angeles with two cats, a dog, and her boyfriend. She earned a BA in cinema from Denison University and went into advertising and marketing while raising three boys. Now, when she's not authoring, she's a certified Pilates instructor. She's written screenplays and short stories since her college days. A Dress the Color of the Sky is her first novel. Here's an excerpt from A Dress the Color of the Sky. One concerning thought kept running through my mind. The peaceful sensation inside me had to be nothing more than the calm before the storm. I knew the facts. My life was in shambles, a complete and total shitstorm. My fears rallied through my head. Nick and I getting a divorce, Christian's life ruined by his mother, my friends figuring out I was a phony and an eviction notice taped to the front door when I pulled up in the driveway. I'm sure at least one or two of us can empathize with that character's predicament. Please, everyone, welcome Jennifer Irwin. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you for taking the time to be with us. I very much appreciate it. Looking forward to today's discussion. You've had an amazing life. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go right. My pleasure. Let me go right into the questions. You told me previously that everything you learned about marketing came from a publishing contest you won a long time ago. You won that contest, but you didn't publish with them. So was there something about that contest? What did you learn and what made you decide not to publish with them? Um, well, what I learned was that all the marketing that happens with a book really falls on the author's shoulders, no matter who you publish with. And the earlier you start it, even before you have your book published, before you even your book's finished, you need to be begin to build excitement and to build an audience. And they taught me the different platforms, social media, how you manage the social media and outsource things. Um, and I ended up winning the publishing contest, but the inner student within me was wanting to do well on the homework assignments. And the homework assignments were basically how you build social media and manage social media. Um, so I took it all very seriously. And then on top of that, you had to gather votes. So I learned how to sell and I learned how to talk about my book and do the three minute elevator pitch, which is really important. Um, and I didn't publish with them because right as I won the publishing contest, I received an offer for the film rights to address the color of the sky. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd gotten a deposit um, um, from the film producer and I decided <laughs> to- You go yeah, girl. <laughs> I decided to write uh, to hire a writing coach. I felt though my, as though my book needed to be polished and it was my first novel. And um, I just wanted to make sure that the story was exactly where it needed to be. And I'm really glad I did hire a writing coach because she sort of called my book a tangled necklace. She helped me untangle it and I learned a lot from her. And, I, and then the rest is history. <laughs> it sounds like an incredible history. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix it up a bit. You wrote Address the Color of the Sky to Heal from Divorce. Is that right? Yeah, I was going through a divorce. I was raising three boys by myself. Um, and I had written a lot before my marriage, and I decided to get back into it. And, and I would write at night, and it made me feel better. Um, and I think it's really good to put, not technically pen to paper, because I guess now it's fingers to the keyboard, but just getting your feelings out and... I wanted to create a character that was going through hard times and, and I could have anything I want happen to her, which was kind of fun. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I just felt a lot better when I started to write. And I think it was very good for my kids to see me chasing a dream late in life. Uh -huh, and just, yeah. You're never too not old. Late, not late. This is not late in life. <laughs> well, according to them, I'm very, very old. <laughs> Um, it, so is, is this something that, aside from it being a powerful story, which has autobiographical elements, is this something you would recommend to other people going through a divorce, other women or, or men too, or 
Am I off track here? Um, well, I think if you're going through hard times, you want to find a creative outlet to ease your mind. So if you're into painting, then draw or paint. I think just find something that makes you happy, mm -hmm. that's your soul when you're in a stressful, it doesn't necessarily mean a divorce. There's a lot of things in life when you lose a loved one, when you move, the, the very stressful things that, that take place. Raising teenagers, I'd put pretty high on the list as, as yeah. stressful. And I, I think that it's just really good to find an outlet that, that makes you feel at peace and that um, takes you away from your problems. And that's what writing does for me. I, I really love it. Would you recommend the book, though, to people going through divorce as something to, to let them know they're not alone in this? Or Oh, my book? Would yeah. my book help somebody going through a divorce? Yeah. Um, I, my book is uh, really it's a, a women's book club read. I think, sure, if you're going through a divorce, it might help you. It's not necessarily a divorce self-help book. It's more um, a journey to self-love. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> just a few minutes ago, you said that you learned to do a three-minute elevator pitch for your book. Mm -hmm. So, would you give us <laughs> your three-minute elevator pitch? You said it. You said it. <laughs> um, yeah, so you I don't have, have to. to. I, have, I haven't done it in a while. Uh, Address the Color Sky is a story of a woman uh, who's in great transition in her life. She is full of self-hatred she thinks that she wants her husband back nick and she is has lost complete track of her moral compass and she has come to some realizations about traumatizing experiences from her childhood that she had not really faced and she decided to check into rehab to regroup and heal from her past try and get nick back and come to grips with everything that happened to her in her life and to stop sleeping around with men random having random sexual encounters. And it's basically Girl Interrupted meets Orange is the New Black. So it's a cast <laughs> of characters in rehab. And it goes back and forth in time. Uh, so you, she does bad things and then you see what happened to her in her life and you really root for her and care for her. Excellent, wonderful. You know someone who's recently published with Random House through a big name agent, and from what you said, they're unhappy with how things turned out. What, what went wrong? Um, well, what she basically said to me, uh, in a, she sent me a, a private message on Facebook, and she, she's one of my classmates, and she said, Jennifer, you are doing incredibly well. And, and, she, and I said, yeah, well, you publish with the big five. And she said, I didn't get I I didn't get really anything from that. I, they didn't market for me, and my book was released, and then I was sort of sent out on my own. and And she said, "You're just really working hard, and you're pushing hard, and you're marketing really well, and you're you're getting all the avenues out on all your social media." And I'm just really impressed. And you're doing far better than I did, and I published with the Big Five. Is basically what she said. That's, so that's, made me feel better to know that they hadn't done the because I always have that fantasy if I yeah. know five how easy it would be but she I, said it really isn't I think a lot of us have that fantasy and you mentioned uh, another friend with double day who's been waiting three years for publication so yeah um, it was funny I met this guy um, I was out with some friends and I started talking to him and I said I was a writer and then he immediately one upped me because he had signed with double day and basically, um, it was a co-write situation, and his book was supposed to be released. This was, I met him several years ago, and his book was supposed to come out any day. It was actually on pre-order. And he sent me uh, an email the other day, and he's like, well, yeah, my book's not out yet. Welcome to publishing with a giant publisher. They decide when your book's going to come out. And he also was taken off as a co as a co-writer. It just, he kind of was at it. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't even think he knew that. I told him, I said, have you taken a look at it? It basically said, with, uh, with help by, or, you know, in addition to, like he wasn't the co-author. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I know. I think, I think he was pretty traumatized when I told him. Really? Yeah. Um, your book's on Amazon. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So yeah, our, it's our, everywhere. I mean, it's it's available at Barnes and Noble and Amazon, Pals, Books a Million, Indie Book, Indie. Yeah. You went through Glass Spider Publishing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and they have a New York Times bestseller. They've made some movie deals. So you're pretty satisfied with them compared to these um, other friends of yours. Yeah, that's actually the 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 guy who founded founded uh, Glass Spider. What ended up being my editor as well. He typically doesn't do the editing, but I was his VIP client, and he really took me took me under his wing. I the reason why I signed with Glass Spider was um, I live with an attorney, and I got received multiple publishing contracts, and this particular one was the best in that I can leave anytime if I do get picked up by a big five. If another publisher wants to pick up the neck the sequel for example i can leave and actually to quote my publisher he said you if you get picked up by a big five i'll be really happy for you um i'm trying to talk you out of it but you can you know i can leave whenever i want he is very author oriented um but he's he doesn't do any marketing for you he's not going to hustle that way he's going to make sure your book is polished your book is professionally laid out and it's He'll handle all the communication between Ingram and the publisher, make sure everything's up on Amazon, the distribution, but that's where it stops. You're on your own for marketing. So that's why it was really invaluable to me to win that publishing contest and really learn how to hustle because it's a hustle. (laughs) Definitely. Definitely. Now your, your book address the color of the sky. That was picked up by Harlequin eBooks. Is that right? Yeah, I signed with an agent in New York, um, and she was not the right agent for me. You mostly did nonfiction, and she. There was another agent I got very close to signing with, who I still to this day am very sad I didn't get to sign with her. She was really my dream agent, um, and then the second agent came along. She picked me right up. She did not read my book. She just was was enthralled that I had a film deal and she pitched my book to all the publishers based on that. But the person that bought the film rights to my book is a billionaire who doesn't have a huge name in Hollywood right now. And so there wasn't a big name attached to the film. And so no one really took notice of that. It wasn't a big deal to them that I had sold the film rights. Um, And Harlequin offered to do an ebook for me, but I had, fantasies and dreams of obviously doing a paperback and a hardcover and going on book signings and you can't do that when you just have an ebook so i declined to take that offer okay. and it's not, it's, my book isn't really a harlequin book it's it's not a romance book so it wasn't really I was say but yeah. all right um you you mentioned all this marketing expertise that you gained from the the, the contest and everything else and you mentioned previously that Instagram is the killer network for authors. Can you- I, I really, um, I have been extremely impressed with Instagram because there are so many book bloggers and book lovers and they're taking their photos of the books that they read and doing these um, amazing pictures and sharing the pictures and all the book bloggers are following each other. And then on their Insta stories, they're doing book mail. So when you send them a book and they receive it in the mail, they're tagging you and thanks Jen Irwin author and doing, you know, taking, um, I have the most incredible photographs of my book from book bloggers and they love indie authors. They love discovering new authors. They're very, um, if, if an author is very grace, gracious, and thankful and kind and responsive, they will get a lot of lovely book bloggers helping them. So I try to be very open and communicative, send private messages, thank people for likes, reach out to people. I've sent a lot of free books, I've gifted a lot of eBooks, and it's really, I mean, I have 75 reviews on Amazon, 4.9 stars, and my book released just only four months ago, so yeah. That's that's incredible. Yeah, it's doing really well. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Okay, so you went to Denison University, you were a film major, you worked in marketing and advertising, you've written screenplays, congratulations on having your book chosen, you've won writing contests, and you were in an arts program. How has that helped your writing? Um, I think writing a screenplay in college and getting into this arts program that I was accepted into uh, helped me to understand the power of a story. And I, I, I guess it was the beginning of me realizing that I was a, a decent writer and that my professor had told me that I had uh, something there and to keep massaging it, there, he saw some talent. And all you need is one person to champion you um, as, a, as a student. And so that was a very great opportunity for me to take that and, and to go with it. And my screenplay was based um, on something that is very similar in my book in that the juxtaposed life of the, the protagonist, mother and father, and how they're very, very different. One is, was a conservative East Coast person, and then the father was this wild, partying California guy. And how that affected this girl's life when she went back and forth between the parents. And so it was just sort of a humorous screenplay. Yeah. And then I wow. springboarded my book from that years, years and years later. Well, you, you, but you did it. Yeah. Okay. So in addition to everything else that you've done, <laughs> all of your accomplishments, you're a certified Pilates instructor. Yeah. And, and you mentioned that that helps you with character development. So, yeah, I really did. Um, teaching Pilates, I taught privates, and I really got to know women. You get very close to your clients, and you talk to them, and you tell them what's going on in your life. They tell you what's going on in their life. And I taught everyone from college students to Playboy bunnies and everyone in between. People had their own jets and people who struggled to pay for lessons. And it was very interesting to see that all women really are the same. They want to be heard. They want good friends. They want love. Um, it's a very universal thing. And I found it also in incredibly interesting when Fifty Shades of Grey came out and all these marriages became sexually recharged. And I, I, that triggered a lot of interest in me. And I didn't find Fifty Shades of Grey to be a book of interest to me, but it was amazing. It was just like wildfire around the Pilates studio and all the wives reading. And so I just thought, wow, that's really interesting. And I want to look into that and know more about what's going on there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. The mind of a writer. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, you've been on book tours, you've got a publicist. What are you finding most useful and how, why, what can we, how can we benefit from your knowledge on that? Can we benefit from your knowledge? Well, one, um, another app, a really great social media platform is Twitter. And there are a lot of authors on Twitter. And I have this group that I'm in on Twitter. And every single day, they retweet for you. You retweet for them. And they're helping you and supporting you. And it's like a family. And I just, I, I think what people do on social media wrong is that they're not responsive you have to reply and thank people and if someone retweets for you retweet back you have to be active on it all the time it's very time consuming and on Facebook as well and Instagram and um, I'm also on LinkedIn and and I, I try to do all my social media media management all day long so if someone sends you a message you're you respond very quickly and you take care of people they take care of you and you do the same thing in return um, and I, I just, I think that once you get into the rhythm and, and that's why it's really important to start early before your book's published to learn how to manage your social media, to start building your platform and to stay on it. Don't drop the ball ever. You've got, I mean, it's it, like I said, it is a hustle, but if you want your book to do well, it's more than just writing a great book and having a great cover and and those kinds of things. You've got to get it out there. No one's going to know about it if you don't know how to really market and get the word out and get readers, get the books in readers' hands. Thank you. That's, I will pay attention and do what I can because I know that I'm a little slothful. Um, <laughs> so do you have a copy of your book handy? I do, right here. Okay. Now that's a, I have left. <laughs> that's a soft cover, right? That's yes, paperback. Uh -huh. 
I don't currently have any hardcovers <clears throat> on me at all. Well, right. didn't you? I, I think you're the one who said that don't if you're an indie author, don't go hardcover. Yeah, I I mean, it hardcovers are so beautiful, and honestly, the book bloggers really appreciated the hardcover, and I have so many beautiful pictures of the um, of the book that, and they really did genuinely appreciate the color and the print and how it had gold lettering on the binder and all that. The problem is, is that it's so expensive to print that I would only, I only for a book that costs thirty dollars, I make a dollar forty four. Ouch. So it's not to me worth that you sell a couple hundred books, you make a couple hundred dollars. It, it just is, it's, you know, it's mm -hmm. not, it's not, you can't live on that. Right. Um, and I think that you want to hit the number one breakout bestseller on Amazon right out of the gates and find three genres that work well for you. That it ones that's going to be a, a very crowded genre and then kind of work down from there. Um, and that happens with eBooks. So you have to get your ebook out quickly and learn how to market that very well. So now, now you're talking about what you've learned about beating the Amazon algorithms. Is that right? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yep. So it's I, all, yeah. So go ahead, tell us, tell us. Well, Amazon, um, first of all, one of the things that Amazon is onto right now is that you cannot have, pay for reviews. You have to get genuine reviews. And if you pay an out, outsourcing company to write reviews for you and they all dump in at once and let's just say they're all five stars when real reviews start to come in and there's twos and ones they're going to realize that this is not those reviews were not real and reviews should trickle in and you should have at least 50 within the first month and yeah you got to get reviews and the thing about being an author and anything that you do in life, whether you're an artist or a lawyer or who knows, whatever your career is, you're in sales and you have to. So let's just say you ask 20 people to write a book review, five will. Four might say, five will say they, they will and then maybe three. You know what I mean? It's just yep. a numbers game. So you just have to get your book out there um, and you'll be surprised by how many people will write you a review and understand how important that is. But you just have to follow up and be a big pain in their rear. Did you write that review? Did you, I mean, my friends would probably want to kill me probably, you know, in the very beginning I was just hounding everyone to write reviews. Now I have tons of reviews and I'm thrilled. Um, and the other thing with Amazon is, is that you need to know, uh, first of all, you have to have a great cover and you have to have a very good blurb because and your first chapter has to be amazing because you, you're going to offer that to them for free so that they can read the first couple of passages. And if those aren't just going to suck you right in, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's sort of five things. Um, and then you want to get yourself in the right genre that is going to be three genres that you can put your book into. And it should be a, a large one, a medium one, and a small one. And then you want to hit the breakout. Um, I did not actually hit number one because there was a problem with my cover. The film producer's name was not placed properly as the book cover designer. And she pulled it right as I released my book. And Ouch. it cost me a lot. It cost me two weeks. And a lot of Barnes and Nobles had set up book signings, but you couldn't get the book. It was a nightmare. But... If, I, if that hadn't happened, I would have for sure, because I've been in the top 100 um, month after month after month. So, I mean, my book's doing really well. And I'm competing in biographical fiction against top-notch authors. So, Congratulations. Good job. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we only have two more questions. Okay. <laughs> I want to thank you for your time. I'm going to ask you the next two questions. Okay, so you're... You're divorced. You're still young, despite what your sons may say. You're living in California. You're from New York. You've been through college, marketing, advertising, Pilates instructor, art. <laughs> I'm gathering that in your life, you've met more than one or two people. <laughs> yeah. What do you value most in your friends? What I value most in my friends is loyalty and that they are not high maintenance because life is very busy. And once in a while, you, you're not gonna be able to talk to them for a long time. 
they need to reach out to you and you reach out to them. It's not, you, they can't just be like, well, I haven't heard from you. And why didn't you call me back? And you know, where it's just, it becomes painful and to yeah. work, to be friends with someone, a friend where you send them a text and just say, I miss you. I love you. I th I'm thinking about you. I'm so busy. I hope to see you soon. Let's have coffee. But just, is, you know, but it isn't going to be like, well, I haven't heard from you. you I, t I was the last person to text you, you know, where they kind of keep score. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't handle that. And I, I try to just, I have a lot of acquaintances, but I have very few super close friends and they have my back. They make me laugh. We have a great time when we see each other. And I, I really like friends that are stylish. My, I'm very visual. So I love it when my friends are, look really great and, and, <laughs> and you're dying. No, I, I, I like to, I, I want to look up to my friends, admire them. And, the, you know, I always feel like I don't really have it pulled together quite right. But I love it when my friends do. <laughs> well, I, okay. I guess we've just found out, folks, that she'll never talk to me again. Um, here's the last question. <clears throat> Now that we know that, what <laughs> question do you wish that someone would ask about you or your book, but nobody has? Um, let's see. Well, I do a lot of book clubs, and boy, they don't hold back on the questions. <laughs> I guess what I'd, um, I would like people to ask me more than have your kids read it, because it's, you know, about a sex addict that are your kids proud of you? And what do your kids think about you chasing a dream late in life? Um, because my greatest accomplishment is having three kids, raising three boys who are good men. And that was really important to me. And they're so proud of me that I did this, that, that I accomplished it, that I stayed up late and I got, took a lot of rejection and I had a lot of tears and I had a lot of highs and lows. And more than them reading the book, I. I want someone to ask me, like, well, are your kids proud of you? Because <laughs> they really are. And I once cleaned my son's car out, and I found my business cards in there, and I thought, he's passing out my business cards. That's, you know, that's just awesome. So, so I, I understand your kids are really proud of you. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Jennifer, that's, that's my last question. Anything you care to add that I haven't covered? Um, well, I just started helping authors with their marketing and book launches and as a consultant. So if, if anybody needs my help and I try to keep it, I don't like it like therapy. You don't want to depend on someone. So I like to springboard people and teach them how like everything I know as quickly as possible and then get them on their way. So I'm helping a guy right now re-release his novel. He's retitled it, recovered it and I'm helping him launch it, and he's thrilled with the work that I've done for him. So I just figured I have all this knowledge, and I love authors, and I like helping authors. So, Is yeah. this information, or is there a link to this on your website that we can give um, out? No, you just reach out to me and say, I, I need your help. And I, I, I'm very good at teaching how to do it and getting people independent. Okay. Well, I, I need your help, and I look forward to talking with you again. Um, Jennifer Irwin, the author of A Dress the Color of the Sky and a marketing maven. She knows it all and she's willing to help people learn it all. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This my is pleasure. Honor and I really appreciate it. No problem. And I look forward to chatting with you again when me you too. have the book come out about how to help people. So, <laughs> take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.